Okay, let's have a look at some, um, I guess, counting problems. Um, and these can be quite difficult to understand, certainly the questions themselves are quite difficult to, to kind of piece together sometimes. So here we go, three mathematics books, five English books, four science books and a dictionary placed on a student's shelf so that the books of each subject remain together. How many different ways can the books be arranged? Um, I guess one way to think about this is to say that M stands for the maths books, and those we've got three maths books, M1, M2, M3. Well, how many different ways can those maths books be arranged? Well, they can be arranged three factorial different ways. Okay, so there's three choices for the first one, and two choices, and there's only one choice left. And then uh, following that same idea, um, for English, I've got uh, E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5. Well, how many different ways can those five things be arranged? Uh, well, they can be arranged five factorial different ways. Um, how many ways can the science books be arranged? Um, well, there's four of them, S1, S2, S3, and S4. So that's going to be four factorial ways. And then uh, there's just a dictionary. Well, that can just be arranged uh, in, in one way, because there's only, only one dictionary. Okay, so those are all the different possible ways that I can arrange the books within their own their own categories. So I'm just arranging them within themselves. Okay, uh, and then you've also got to remember that also I've still got all these these blocks of books. So the M stands for all the maths books which are together. The E is all the English books which are together. All the science books, and obviously the dictionary. Well, how many ways of rearranging these where I put them all together? Well, again, um, there's four of them, so there's going to be four factorial ways of actually rearranging uh, the blocks of books themselves. So, therefore, the total number of ways of rearranging everything I've got the three factorial ways for the maths books individually, times by five factorial, the individual ways of the English books times by 4 factorial for the individual ways of the science books, and times by 4 factorial, which is the, the ways in which those blocks of books can actually be rearranged. So the total answer uh, is 414,720. Uh, I said quite, uh, quite difficult to, to work that one out. Um, secondly, it says, in how many of these will the dictionary be next to the mathematics books? Okay, so this is the total number of ways it can be rearranged. How many times will I actually end up with a situation where the dictionary and the maths books will be together? Uh, I guess there's a few ways of doing it, but possibly the easiest way is to actually think about those combinations. So I'd end up with M, D, E, S, or I could have M, D, S, E, or I could have E, M, D, S, or S, M. C E or S E M D or E S M D. So one, two, three, four. There's six possibilities there, and obviously uh, the same again if I just had the D instead of the M. So I'd have D M E S D M S E, etc., etc. So if I times them by two, it's the total number of ways that the the maths books and the dictionary are going to be together. There's just twelve different ways that that can happen. And you think, well, how many total ways were there of rearranging the, the, the maths, English, science, and dictionaries? Well, there was four factorial, or well, four factorial is 24. So this is basically saying half of those ways will have the dictionary and the maths uh, next to each other. So basically, half of this total here will end up having the maths and the dictionary next to each other. So uh, if I do that, I basically just divide this by 2, so that gives me 207,360. Okay, question number 2. Uh, six boys, five girls in a school tennis club. A team of two boys and two girls will be selected to represent the team in a tennis competition. How many different ways can the team be selected? Well, I've got to have two boys out of those six boys. So I've got six choose two and I've got to have two girls from those five girls therefore 
I choose two. So those are all my possibilities. So six times two, so six choose two times five choose two equals 150. Okay, for part B, um, basically says that Tim has to be selected, Anna has to be selected. Well, if Tim has to be selected, well, there's only five boys left to choose. Um, so I've now only got one extra boy to choose because uh, Tim has already been chosen. And equally, uh, there's only one girl left to choose out of the four girls that are left because, again, Anna has been taken out of that pool of the, the girls who need to be chosen. So it's five choose one times four choose one, okay, which gives me 20. Um, and then the last bit, the probability that the team includes both Tim and Anna. Well, the number of ways in which Tim and Anna can be included is a total of 20 ways uh, out of total number of ways, which is 150. Okay, and then one last question. Uh, we've got nine desks. Again, sometimes it might be helpful just to sketch them out, see what we've got. So there we go, we've got the nine desks. Those are the front desks. And three students sit in the room. Um, find the probability that two out of the three front desks are chosen. Well, if two out of the three front desks are chosen, then, well, there's three desks at the front. Two of them need to be chosen. So I need three choose two. So I need that to have happened. And then, well, the one that's left, well, there's one student who can't sit in that front row. So therefore, I've got out of those six desks, choose one. So three out of the three desks at the front, two need to be chosen. Of the six desks behind, one needs to be chosen. So the total, um, the probabilities there is three choose two times six choose one. And if I work that out, that gives me 18. Okay, so that's the probabilities. Um, But I haven't quite finished the question yet because um, as an overall probability, I need to find out just the, the probabilities overall. So there's nine desks in total and I've got three students. So overall, there are nine choose three options in total. So there's 84 different combinations that the students could sit. So 18 of those options actually fulfill the criteria in the question. So I can finally finish that off and say that the probability is 18 out of 84.